or should I say it were to us directly? Um, because if he's bringing it in on Monday, he must have been with you guys. Or to the board directly, to the clerk's office in a sealed envelope, or to the board directly. Mr. Alvin will then report back to the board and executive the session is the final fight of the university. You are welcome to get to the session and we will facilitate the time that works for both yourself and Mr. Alvin to be able to speak. Sounds good to me. Okay, I will print it out and then you guys can actually look at that. Good. Because I know sometimes I read things. Both. I suppose just like a park manor. You don't think to him, to his business? Because the Thank you. You're welcome for doing that. I think 16 covers it as long as it's not like a four hour meeting. That's the biggest thing. I figured. I bought the only one that Hayworth had. I mean, they've got a bunch up there, they're all the same. Oh, I think I bought the only singular one. Mind if I just read it for the record? Um, June 4th, 2018, John Grace Lincoln Park Manor. Dear John, the Lincoln County Commissioners in regular session on May 31st, 2018 made the following motion pertaining to Lincoln Park Manor. Alexis Flug moved to request from Lincoln Park Manor the balance sheet, income statements, cash flow statements, census, inf census information, and cost reports for 2015, 16, 17 to current under a non-disclosure agreement for examination and executive session with Doug Alvin as the county's consultant, seconded by Aljo Wallace, the motion carried. The board has accepted the help um, from, from Doug Alvin, Northwest Kansas Economic Innovation Center to review the documents listed above to assess the feasibility of the nursing home. Mr. Alvin is willing to sign a non-disclosure agreement with your organization. We would appreciate receiving the information by Monday, June 18th. You may submit the information in a sealed envelope and deliver to the county clerk's office or to the board directly. Mr. Alvin will then report back to the board in executive session his opinion on the viability of the nursing home. You are welcome 
uh, no D, Don, to attend that session, and we will facilitate a time that works for both yourself and Mr. Alwyn to be present, and then the board. With those few small corrections, I move to approve. I will second. Is there any further discussion? I guess I'm, uh, I'm not sure that we need that or the board directly. I think when it comes to the county clerk's office, it is coming to the county commissioners. I just didn't know. I think that's... It would speed it up a lot, probably. I think that's kind of unnecessary to put that in because all our correspondence pass through the county clerk's office. I just said no. Or if you, like you said, if he wanted to come in to to be on the agenda, he could bring it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a problem omitting it. I just think we just we never, I guess, never ask. Everything comes to the county clerk instead of the board director. <clears throat> I would agree. discussion all over the place. Aye. 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 Good morning. Aye. Conservation District here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You're, you're the chairman. <laughs> you're in luck. You're in luck. We're having you kind of a slow day. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to sit here for an hour. Wait for us to... Good morning. 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 Good morning.
previously. So they would match what you give. If they would match the twenty thousand for twenty thousand. It would make it come out. Yeah. Yeah. Even that way. But yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We have. If you look at our budget, we've tried to cut. We've shaved back um, wages. We've cut travel. You know. You know your hotel and your mileage and everything else is going up. But we've tried to shave back as much as we can. So when someone does, um, let's say, revamps their um, sewage system or something mm -hmm. like that, when they apply, you guys are part of that? When they yes. apply for the reimbursement to do? Yes. Right. And they is there a separate, like, they, could, they can apply, this would be a local board, but they can also apply through the state agencies? Uh, as far no, as we, we get our money from the state. We, we get our we are that money from the state. Agent. Transfers. So if and when you apply for the, um, how am I trying to say this? What is it called? The septic system. Right. So yes. when you apply for that reimbursement, this is the only place that that money comes from locally. When, right. When, if you get approved or for whatever amount. From the state. From the state cost share. But do they right. apply directly to you or to? Yes. They come. Yeah. Yeah. They come to us with an application, and either they see Sean Estrell first, mm -hmm. or they see us. Mm -hmm. If they come see us, then we send them to Sean because he has to come out and do the septic, the site check for us. Yes. So, and then if they're eligible, they have to meet four criteria to be eligible for septic system replacement. And if they meet those, then we give them a cost share contract if we have the funds. So, how available. many of those did we do, like in seventeen, since eighteen is not finished? Um, we did four, I believe. With that, and this is separate. Um, the budget here does not reflect the cost share. The That's what I'm is, wondering because yeah. I didn't see. No, no, the budget is solely for our operating expenses, salary That's wages, what, that's travel, what my question things is. like that. This, the cost share is a separate fund. But they just go through you and you. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and we are getting more funds this year than we did last year for cost for cost share. So, which is good. Um, so we can get that to go back. Up. We've about five thousand dollars more cost share dollars, so that'll be, you know, at least another project or project and a half that we can get completed um, in the county. So then, just for my own clarification, are you, are you the employee of the board? Yes. Is that how that works? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm the employee of the board. We have five board members. We have here um, David Blacker and Carl Wilson are the other two mm -hmm. board members. But yes, I work for the mm -hmm. conservation district. Mm -hmm. Right, you're half, yes. you're not halfway through the year yet. Right. So you're just right. Yep. Yes. Yep. So we're kind of at the ballpark. <laughs> so when yes. you do four, four of those type of um, reimbursement claims, what are besides septic? What else? On page. We. Oh, page five. Yeah, I did bring life. The one, two, three. Okay, okay, down in the middle. <laughs> um, wells, waterway construction, terrace construction, that's all under water resource cost share. Okay. And then on point, the next paragraph, um, those are livestock waste, plugging abandoned wells, household waste systems, and things that... Thank you, yes, that clarifies, yes. yeah. It looks like we did three last year. I'm three sorry. septic system replacements, yes. two soil testing. Yes. And then we just approved um, one for the solar pump. So, and that's going to go on 18 because that was in 17. So, yeah. So, but we try and make, we have a limit. So, the, the limit that they get is $2,500 for a septic system replacement just because it, it helps out a little bit. I mean, it's not going to replace the whole thing, but it's, it's better than, than nothing, you know, if you come for us to that. We've basically got all our funds allocated for this year, right? And we're waiting for. Yes. We've got more yeah. projects than we've got funding for from the state for cost share. So. And those money will come available in July. <coughs> they seem to have a lifespan, so they don't have a run out of the place. Right. 
we consider the state actually considers the lifespan as 10 years. So they can come in and get cost share today um, for building terraces or whatever. And then I guess in 20 years, it's the terraces. Um, you know, if they're not flushing, then they could actually get cost share again in 20 years. But like a septic system, they could come in in 11 years if it's bad or whatever and get cost share again. So we have different lifespans on the different projects that we have. So would you say that's the majority of your responsibility would be to prepare those cost share applications? We or? do a lot of the applications. We do a lot of education activities um, that are included in there that I'm responsible for or we're responsible um, for helps out a lot with that. Um, also we have in our office, we have the National Resources Conservation Service um, and they're the federal side and I provide 50% of the time working for them um, and then pay for my space and utilities and things like that. So we do all our cost share. I'm responsible for setting up all of their federally funded cost share so programs, you taking applications. Are part like time then for the conservation district? And you get no. I'm no. The only reimbursement we get for federal is my space and like paper toner, use of copy, internet, computer, the administrative clients. That's what we get in return for me helping out in they, our CS. They provide you an office. They provide an office. If, if it weren't for them, then I'd have to be paying rent, I'd have to be paying utilities, I'd have to be all of that. So, I mean, that's a big, tremendous um, function there. So, but no, I'm full time for them. Full time for soil conservation. For soil conservation, yeah. 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 And there's uh, CRP seedings, there's drills that we run around, we have equipment that we run out, Patty takes care of that equipment, makes sure it needs repaired or sets up the schedule so that it gets to more places. Say what? Do you sell trees? Yes. yes. Sell trees, sell seeds, sell marking flags. <laughs> What are the what's the line item for administrative expenses? Um, that would be like our annual meeting that we have. We're required to have every year. Um, it would be if we have to buy. There's certain things that we have to buy, um, like envelopes. So I can't use federal envelopes to mail out all yeah, you can't cross. You know, yeah. so there's those type of things that we have. Um, Yeah, so things, newsletters, anything that goes. Um, I, the administrative and the information education kind of overlaps a little bit um, because we can do. Um, it just depends on how it fits in. You can use those funds to put on so, one of your seminars. Or something. Right. Right. Thank you for this write-up. I will read it. Thank you. Running kind of late this morning, Howard. It's starting to rain, so I had to quit. It's raining. <laughs>
I don't know if that's a bad thing, though. <coughs> Don, are, are there any highlighters back there at all? Or in your desk, maybe? I just, if, if you have one, I would like one to use. Said that Michael is not going to be able to make it. They're getting a new piece of equipment delivered. Again, we've got the new okay. employee starting. It. We've already approved this, correct? Yes. Okay. 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 Do you want two signed copies to send? So am I understanding that the conservation board is pretty similar to the bus board in its setup that they employ? Well, no, because we're now paying. We're paying, so that's not true. I don't, I don't know how that board is elected. Are they elected? They're elected. That's what I was thinking. So They're like, separate, totally separate. So it's like a, well, yeah, how, do we have anything similar? Huh? Not a special mill levy. Oh, they're not nonprofit either. So, so they're just elected in the when, whatever whenever the election rotation comes up. Not any of our elections. Oh, really? So they have their own election. Their annual meeting. They have an election. 
I think the members are divided the way the FSA is. is the, the districts are the same. There's three. And the annual meeting is always in January or February. Which was that? Brady. You sent uh, notifications to these people, correct? I, if they had more interest, more interest in, Yes. And there were three. We got a letter then from the Deborah. Marion starts that one. Yeah. yeah. Marion came in and talked to us. Mm -hmm. When she, yeah, those are the three. I think we had three second responses, right? She did say to me verbally that she is. She does a lot. But are there, but so this doesn't have any district lines. And Penny indicated that he wouldn't mind going off, is that correct? Correct. Which one? This one? Mm -hmm. So am I correct in saying that there were three people that responded the second time? Yes. Well, four. I had one verbal one from verbal. Terry Lilac. And the three additional correspondents. Second. I don't know that ever. I think she indicated that, but she may at some point be or something someone said. Yeah. I don't know that. That may be helpful since they're not meeting regularly that you could still have a quorum if you stated that the quorum was just the majority of the board members and you had more board members to get people to participate. Do they have sure, it's harder to get a quorum if you have a large group than it is if you have a small group. I mean, that's, I've run into that problems with. Well, it's a 50-50. I mean... Who, on, who set this up to a certain number of people? Any idea? I don't. All I know is that Dwayne um, Venado was kind of the spearhead of it, and the board was formed when they went to run for the nobody that was voted in. Did they only do that once? What do we allocate yearly right now? Do you know? Nothing? They could attend the historical society meetings as... Most of these do. Yeah, but I mean, instead of, of having just their own meetings, that way they wouldn't... Hmm. When they've done their projects before, like the Preservation Board did the Stone Arch Bridge project, um, basically what they would do is they'd go out and get donations, and um, Terry Lilac, I think, is the one that had applied for the, the they have two or three grants now, but um, for the two grants that we were involved with, then the counties 
sponsored the grant and then basically when it came time for their share of the, the cost to cut the, of the grant because it was a cost share. They didn't they have would, the funds? Well, they would get donations, I'm assuming, and turn in money because I know they got they raise money. The river. Is that the one that they did on 181? The, are, are you specific? When you say the stone yeah. arch? Yeah. 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 yeah, with the silver. Did they use any of that on the depot? Or did they do that no, all the time? That's historical. historical. Yeah, that was historical society, the way I understand it. Um, so we had seven, and we, we were looking at three open seats. Was it ten? Do I, is that nine total? So we had six. Well, uh, three of them are residents, and then, you know, this perimeter, she this part investing, is good, she's investing a lot in the, Grant writing, yeah. I mean, she this is, one was not pertaining to the um, preservation board. It was some other board. Not that one, different one. Oh, I think that one would be probably good, too. Yeah, this one said the hospital board and crime restitution board, so I'm just going to set that to the side. And there were a couple that kind of said if needed. Well, I think we have four that were maybe a little more interested than the others. You'd think it'd just be local, that there would be no state oversight or anything. We can just appoint them and let them work it out among themselves, I suppose. Do what? So if you just appoint these ones that are interested, you can let them work well, it out amongst themselves. What is that? Janelle and Joe? Well, there's probably more on the board that aren't active that might actually want to get off, too. So. I, I don't have a problem with point four, but let them work out how they want to do it. Mm-hmm. That acceptable? You missed the motion. Yeah. I would entertain the motion, man. Right? Or I will move. I don't care. I would move that we appoint Terry Lilac, Marion Sturf, Marion McReynolds, and Deb Perimeter. I think it's Parmenter, maybe? Parmenter. Parmenter. She signed it, Deb. To the Preservation Board. Do I have a second? A second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. I'm going to put it back on there. I'm going to the one that had the five or six on it. Are those all done? Yes. Yes. Would you like me to take my pile of paper clips? Because I'm not need those. Yeah, you can. My bucket's Here, running. You have a bucket of them someplace if you do. I do. It is running kind of low. 
I should clean out my desk drawer and bring them up here, I guess. We don't like the ones that have the little uh, grooves in them. Yeah. I'll try to remember to do that. I'll bring some up for you. You, you reuse, recycle them. Well, Michael's tied up. You have something you want to talk about, Alexa? Uh, yeah, I'll, I will, um, Go ahead and send this to Michael, too. I, I did not this week, but I wanted to bring it up in the meeting, and I know he's not here, so I wanted to kill two birds with one stone, but I guess I'll just do it this way. We had talked about his utilization of this mobile 311 program, and, you know, I'm getting feedback that the employees in the highway department think that this is some unnecessary oversight being imposed by one of three commissioners, which is kind of uh, comical considering I asked for a map and I got a program that I don't have access to. So um, when I questioned the printout that we were given these six sheets on all of the requests that were made by the motor operator, uh, motor grader operators for their different routes, um, it, it's indicated multiple times that there are the same requests coming in, and that indicates to me that there's no follow-up as far as fixing that request. And I understand it does not need to be said to me that you can't get everything done at once and that it takes time to do some of these things. However, I don't really see a prioritization process. I don't see dates. I was indicating all of this concern to Michael at the last meeting and then he wanted to know what were duplicates. And I have uh, quite a few, and I'll list them individually to him, but just for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have 17 duplicate requests from one route. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have five duplicated requests from another route. Seventeen more duplicated requests, and I know that these are not just the system printing out two of the same because they're not always. They are in the same order, but some of them have additional or reduced requests in the second time that they appear. So without a date on these things, I feel like this printout is not going to help us do any organizing whatsoever. Um, it, but just for example, um, we have here, let's see, we also have the shop office making certain requests, and I assume that's to log in the specific uh, repairs needed. And so there are also duplicate ones on there, so that may explain, if he has an explanation for us, why some of these are just duplicated. Um, but on this spreadsheet, he really needs to consolidate. We have two columns for the description, so instead of it being them having an option, just they need to consolidate that into one column so we can see the description and then we can add the date of the request and then the date of the follow-up and the repair. Because a lot of these are simple and that was our conversation last week. I have 10 in front of me that just say clean ditches and culverts, but how can they do that without being given permission to make those one calls? I don't see why we have one person employed for 25 other employees to make all of their calls to do that sort of work. Um, it's just not making sense. And this indicates to me why there were only 17 one calls last year to clean out ditches and culverts. I mean, if I have 10 requests from one person, that means there should have been many more than 17 last year for the whole department. So again, this is, this is a, a management issue here that needs to be addressed. And I'd like to know what your plans are, the two of you as commissioners, to oversee this.
Well, I'll give you the, the first example right here. If this, if these were just duplicated for some reason, I have three in a row right here, all from the same um, person. Okay, 825 North 40th, 399 East Deer, and 377 East Deer, all from the same motor grader operator. And you go above that, and it continues, 488 East Bison, 373 East Rye. But in between these, North 40th Road, there's 1219 and 805 by different operators. Okay, so maybe so maybe the initial operator is getting is put inputting and then maybe they're assigning it to a different crew? Would that be maybe who's No, the because operators? every time it's the same address, it's the same person, the input person. This is the input person here. Okay. And what I'm saying is they didn't just copy and paste accidentally twice because the, the, the alignment is not the same. If you look above 825 North 40th, you have a different number for North 40th and a different operator and a different request. See, you have a culvert clean out there. I have a culvert clean out here, but it's by a different person and it's a different address. Then it continues with those same requests from that other. So well, um, without dates, we can't analyze this information. And I'm concerned that it's been almost a year and we don't have... This one has 336 East Iron, removed from road, remove trees and pile up to be burned, will need chainsaws, loader, motor grader, bobcat, and trucks. And that's not on here. So maybe this one got done. Remove trucks and pile up to burn, will need chainsaws, loader, motor grader. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, that's another duplicate. One. I forgot to mark it then. It is a duplicate. I think he did say that. That the same Iquan put in a project that was going to require more than one of them, and it got also added in as the, his partners. Well, I, I thought he was trying to explain that it, it that then they go in and they assign it to, and so that every person that is assigned to it will get yeah. listed. As but that's not what this is showing because this is just showing showing the same person over and over with the same addresses. I've tried to mark like these two are duplicate. Clean ditch, clean ditch, clean ditch, cut and trim trees, piles need burned, piles need burned, cut and trim trees. And those are all, still mm -hmm. and it's the same, see it says flagged by, that's the title of that column, who it is flagged by. So they're on this map. So if one map. of them is being assigned, then you're not getting the column that says that it was assigned to? Well, and it doesn't say a date, like if, if yeah. they said that they, they noticed that this particular stretch of ditch needs cleaned, it's not saying a date. That way, if it does get done a week to three weeks later, we don't know. I mean, one of these could be a request and one of these could be a completion, but it sure doesn't say that. And I'm sure all of these things didn't get done no, because sure. a lot of them are um, requests to clean ditch. And so my question is, how, how do you fix that problem when a motor grader operator says that, hey, I have 10 different stretches a mile where I want to clean ditches, but that requires a one call for all of them and possibly more equipment depending on the need there. I mean, there's got to be a better way to make these individuals self-sufficient without waiting around on one person who's responsible for a thousand miles to get to their particular request. I feel that they don't have enough individual authority, and if we can't trust them to have that, then what are we doing? 
Well, I don't think we can have all of them scheduling the additional help that they're going to need to clean out a ditch. But there should be a classification. If I know I can clean this ditch with my blade at you know specific angle, and all I need to do is kick some of that gravel back up on and take the sod back off, that wouldn't require additional help. But if you know in the meantime, I mean, how are they cleaning culverts? Because I haven't seen very many clean ones. So how are they actually physically cleaning them? I normally go under the back of the excavator and they dig out. What about the small ones, though? Same thing. They dig out in front of them. Some of them, might they could do with a shovel, it kind of depends. Some of them have crop residue stacked four foot high in them. So I know our elevator, when I lived out in the country, used to get out and shovel the but I'm not sure many of them are Exactly. So, uh, I so think some of it's more that they're not. Well, capable. I think. I know some of them aren't, and, and that is something we talked about last year about what we can do for part time help. That someone is responsible to go around with a pickup and a shovel, you know, and the boulders that get left alongside the road and the, and the windrows, the trees live, that pile up against the culverts. When you live in the country, they didn't have the crop residue that they have now. No, they don't. That's true. And, you know, when, when you have crop residue, Milo stops mixed in the dirt and it's piled up two or three feet high. The shovel's not the way to get it out of it. Well, I can tell you that landowner that was on the other side of my Herman's property used to always clean out the culvert because he wanted to make sure the land, the water flowed into her property to get away, if that makes sense. So that particular culvert never so, had an issue. Okay, we just bought a brand new backhoe. So what is going to be its primary function? Bridge crew. And what does the secondary backhoe do on a regular basis? They use it to go out and clean culverts and other things, so they don't have to pull one off the bridge crew to do it. So they who, also have a mini excavator. They go out and clean culverts with too. So who is mapping and tracking and operating the backhoe or the mini excavator specifically for this culvert issue? Because I think we can all agree we've been in the country enough to see that that is. An issue. Not only is it due to you know pilings up of trees and like you're saying crop residue, but it's also just lack of maintenance for quite a few years. So how do you? I mean, there has to be more of a strata here than just two people at the top that are supposed to call the shots for every last individual function of every other employee because it's not working. <clears throat> Personally, if you want my input, it hasn't been working since we downsized the department and we got rid of the two other supervisory positions. Because we used to have a special projects, which I think did culverts and projects. And then we had a bridge who took care of bridges. And then we had the road supervisor. And then we had a shop woman that took care of ordering. And then we had a secretary. So we had five. And now we have three. OK, but in that way, we do also have more technology. So there's an easier way to facilitate the organization of it without necessarily, I mean, we were just talking about they're requesting additional secretarial help in the office, but I don't see in front of me what we need to even make that assessment because it's not organized. There are no dates. Um, do you remember, and I, this is to the board, do you remember that we had Michael contact Norm Bowers from the Kansas Association of Counties because he is the contract, and I'll say contracted, I don't know if he's an employee or if he's directly contracted, but he's, he works for the Kansas Association of Counties as the engineer. Have you met him? He's probably close to retirement, I assume, but he's been around long enough and he's, he's an engineer. And he had 
when I contacted him about how to organize some of these issues that we're seeing, he had an official complaint form that, and concern form, whatever you want to call it word-wise, it, I think we need to stop being so sensitive about these words, but the complaint form that, that he had, I suggested for Michael to get in contact with him. So he did, and he brought it in, and the board approved it. So have either one of you seen any of those? Yeah, we've had some people fill them out. Al Joe, have you seen any of the complaint forms? No, I haven't seen any complaint forms. Well, a few weeks ago I requested to see them, and they don't exist. The department has not been using them. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't even care to get into the details of what their justification is, but the problem is if the commission is approving specific actions to be taken by that department and it's not happening, we need to follow up on that. So we're, here we are a year later after having adopted a specific complaint form and it's not being used. So when I requested the complaints to take them out from the department, it's basically just a list of, it's a call log. And again, no dates, no people who called in. All we have is pretty much a specific address, just like we have in this report here, just an address and a potential, you know, culvert issue, hole in the road, stop sign down, etc. You cannot organize in that manner. I mean, no wonder the office personnel feels bombarded. You cannot organize without dates and names and a specific set of paperwork that has been approved for you to follow. So what do we do for them to help them get better organized? Else? Well, that was a question. <laughs> no. No. Terry, you just said that you, we've had people fill out these complaint forms, yet obviously you don't know that because I told you I requested them and they don't exist. So why did you say that? You know what? I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. You want to sit here and argument. argue with yourself all damn day long. I don't Terry, care. Terry, it's not an argument. You obviously stated something that was not true because you, you claim to have known. You said we have people filling them out. Who? We now, have where had. have you seen them? I think we had one in here one day and a guy filled it in. I think they have three or four. That's what I was told. Yep. But that's only three or four. And then I was told that they would come to the person to fill out. So when she put in her request for the information, I said, why don't you just copy out of that book? And they said it would come to the person. And that's when they should come back to you and say, it's to the person. Or how can you reduce the, if, if they're saying that you have to write down too much information on that one individual piece of paper, then it can be reduced. Maybe there are some details on there that we don't necessarily need. But the list that I got is literally a location and an issue. There's no date. There's not even the person that called in. There's no record. If you call in three different times about the same issue, which we have had people come in here in person and tell us. I mean, we are elected by the public to represent them. We have the public telling us that they have lodged multiple complaints on the same issue, yet we sit here and don't even demand that the department adhere to our recommendations for their system. I mean, I'm not sure what your plan is here, but whatever has been happening is not working. So could you explain what your plan is to remedy this situation? Because it looks to me as if it's still in the same predicament it was in last year at this time. Did you guys actually approve the complaint form? Not that I know of. Yes, he brought it. He well, I know he brought it and showed it to you. Did you guys 
guys actually approve it and say this is what we want you to use? I'm pretty sure that was the whole, I mean, if we're going to bring it down to whether there was a motion or not, I can't tell you that, but I'm pretty sure that he has met with us weekly, and if he didn't understand that that was the expectation of the board, then maybe he's not fit for his position. I think you have three or four hundred reasons why he's not fit for his position. And so do many other people who are seeing that the deterioration of the uh, highway department you know, the hell is continuous. a lot continuous. of other people that think he does a good job, too. But they're not the ones whispering in your ear all the way, are they? I don't have people whispering in my ear. Uh, We've had people come to public hell, meetings, Hell, they sit Terry. in here and text you. Everybody has seen it. They sit there and text away, and then they put their phone down, and you pick yours up. Do you not remember how many public complaints we've had about this department and about these same issues? Are you just going to ignore that? Because it's been over a year. I get a lot of, com I get a lot of compliments on them, too. You also sit here and say that we have people filling out paperwork that you've never seen. And that when I ask for it, it doesn't exist. So how can anyone trust what you say? They can't. No, no they one can't. can trust anything I say. They can believe every damn thing you say. Believe me. You have an MBA. Too bad you don't have a little bit of common sense to go along with it. Your personal attack speaks volumes of your mental capacity. Oh, However, well, I've been sitting here for a year with your personal attacks. I'm not, I have never personally attacked you. I've asked oh, you about yes, you what have. you're, no, I have not. Oh, yes, you have. Name one personal attack, Terry. Please, please I do. told you a little while ago, I'm not going to sit here all morning and argue with you. No, I have asked you with, direct go, questions go about your job. I have asked you direct questions about your job, to which you have never provided an answer. And I don't have to answer to you. I've told you before. Did you vote for me? No. You're not my constituent. If you don't think that your job is to address the concerns I, that have been brought before us publicly... My job is not to answer to you, I can tell you. <clears throat> you and I don't see anything the same way. We could sit here for days and argue about things. And Terry, this is exactly why you have brought us to be the fifth highest taxed county in the entire state with a poor condition of roads and bridges and a financial debacle on our hands that we won't dig our way out of for the next 10 years. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. Yes, it yeah. is. It's You've been here long fault. enough. Yep. It's my fault, all right. So what is your plan to remedy any of that? I thought you had the plans. You won't answer my questions to get to the actual solutions. You think it's perfectly acceptable to give your subordinate personnel a justifiable and reasonable way to proceed with their paperwork and it doesn't get done, but that's fine. That's your management technique. When are we going to talk about the pending lawsuit that was caused by the highway department? How many more days do we have? I don't have, have any details on it. How I'm many sure. more days do we have to respond? We don't respond. We're not going to respond? The insurance company respond. Have you contacted the insurance company? Mm -hmm. So, they take care of so we have been, the board has been told that the insurance, is, that's a covered, that's a covered uh, liability. Mm-mm. No. So how, how much of a premium increase are we facing? None. We won't face any until we're... until they have to pay something out. So there's no guarantees. Just because somebody sued us doesn't mean that they're going to win. 
So how many times has this happened in the last five years? For a highway department? Five years. I mean, it's probably more than five years. Was there a premium increase? So, what kind of reprimand is going to happen because of the the acts of this department that led to this situation? Probably none. Why is that? Someone's going to have to determine that they actually did something wrong first. Did you? Just because you know, just because you have a relationship with the people and you live on their property doesn't necessarily mean they're right. I'm sure it's a legal issue and it'll get decided there. That's a cute assumption. The first I was made known of anything was the same time you were when I received legal documentation in the mail. You have anything for us, no? I moved to, to require forth. the highway department to adhere to the complaint forms that were approved previously by the commission. I have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Motion dies for lack of second. I move to require Michael O'Hare to follow up on the previous motion to have him bring forth the mobile 311 program to the commission. for an explanation Demonstration. And that's what it was. Get all that done. Do I have a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. I move to require disclosure on the part of highway department personnel of any kickbacks or personal receipts. has made purchases. It might be more proper to have them do it before I disclose publicly, just so you know. I'm giving that opportunity in advance. Do I have a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. 
I moved to hold the June 2018, June 18th, 2018 meeting at an evening time. Due to the presence of auditors to allow for public attendance. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I'll vote. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Yes. I will be voting no. I am extremely upset about the badgering, the bad attitude, the negativity that's been expressed at this commission. I have remained silent. And I will remain silent. I will not partake in that kind of unconstructive dialogue. That has what to do with the auditor's presence this week? This week of the 18th? I think most everybody that comes in here thinks they get badgers. And we're going to pay for it dearly, especially the next time we need an architect. <laughs> because the seventy thousand dollars we spent on the architect has because they many talk problems. because they talk to each other, and the next time we need one, we're going to pay for it. <laughs> I'm glad that you feel that you got your money's worth, Terry. Well, I'll tell you, I was in the construction business for thirty years. I think I know a little bit more about how projects work than you do. So, there's no further discussion. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. No. I move to have the commission hold evening meetings during the budgeting process to allow for public attendance. And that same motion you made? No, it's not. That's not. That won't be the entire budgeting process. Oh. Do I have a second? Motion died for lack of a second. There are no further business coming for the board. We will adjourn and reconvene on June the 11th, 8 a.m.